Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by Omen's new wireless range of mice, keyboards and headsets. Sony's recent PlayStation 5 game showreel ended on a real high note. Demon's Souls Remake is the game we'd all been dying to see in action again and here we have a second taste. This time it's a braver showing, one that presents continuous unedited gameplay of its opening area, a look at the Nexus Hub and a kind of sizzle reel of its bosses. Everything is confirmed to be running on true PS5 hardware though, and being a remake of an 11 year old work, developer Bluepoint Games clearly finds freedom in that generational leap to flesh out the world with new visual touches. Enemies do go down too quickly, yes, and the HUD is turned off, but that's all fine for a demo. Boletaria's layout is still very much recognisable though, and we've really never seen a Souls game so rich in its detail. Going into a tech breakdown, I had a few questions, some I hope to answer today. How does the gameplay compare to the original PS3 game? And how does performance hold up in our first frame rate analysis of a PlayStation 5 game? Let's find out. Bluepoint's track record speaks for itself. Shadow of the Colossus remains one of the best remakes of all time and somehow Demon's Souls ups the ante in myriad ways. There's just so much creative flair going into this reimagining. The vines creeping up the pillars, the dust particles lit by oncoming light, and the newly added chains on the vanguard. Even its axe is completely redesigned, blood spraying across its torso with every slash. There's slight tweaks to the layout too, as small as they are, like an early fence forcing you to vault over. The Soul series story is told by its setting, which is why Bluepoint taking direction here is such a big deal. The visual design is a huge part of understanding the lore of Boletaria, and there were a lot of blanks to fill in during the move from PlayStation 3 to 5. Resolution and frame rate then, what's the score on PS5? Well, Bluepoint's anti-aliasing does a superb job in this trailer. Alongside the motion blur, not to mention per object blur, it makes pixel counts a real challenge and the end presentation turned out brilliantly crisp and clear. Even so, a native 2560x1440 is in evidence across the video. Bearing in mind this is 60fps gameplay, 1440p is quite a respectable number to come out with. All of it suggests we're seeing an intended performance mode running at 1440p at 60fps. Given we have seen 4K assets of the game previously, it's a strong sign 4K is what we can expect from a visuals mode resolution. So 4K 30 or 1440p 60, it'd make a lot of sense and we'd gladly take the choice. Anything could happen by release, but this aspect is looking more certain with this trailer, so exciting stuff. What else do we see? Ray tracing is a big draw for next gen of course, and ray trace shadows were mentioned in Sony's marketing around the last reveal trailer. Right now though, for this gameplay showing at least, I can't confirm the effects of it. It's something we'll wait to test in the final build to really understand its implementation. The demo does however give us an early glimpse into its performance. I've taken the best quality version of the trailer possible and everything tracked perfectly through our tools, even revealing some elements you might miss by eye. Bluepoint is evidently very proud of their performance level and gameplay is shown mostly unedited for very good reason. The tutorial area flows beautifully at 60fps, locked for the entirety of the demo, though it has to be stressed this is still early code. We're getting 60fps though, albeit with some small exceptions. The upgrade is phenomenal when considering the original PS3 game. 30fps with VSync was the setup in 2009, with some pretty aggressive drops under. Flash forward to today and we're not only getting the most visually advanced Souls title, but also one of the best performing at 60fps. There are admittedly a few drops on show, but nothing too drastic. During the montage of bosses, the Tower Knight crashing its shield triggers a drop to the mid 50s, with some tearing, but that's it. Again, it's all early days. It's interesting to point out the tearing though. It only happens at the top and bottom 10% of the screen, nothing in the middle at all, so it was easy to miss in action and honestly won't bother most people. This rendering setup, allowing for a small level of adaptive tearing, is similar to how the Shadow of the Colossus remake worked. 
we get partially rendered frames with a tear if it falls just outside the 16.7 millisecond rendering budget needed for 60fps. It's a positive overall, and not too intrusive in this case. It's besides the point too, when a majority of the feed, including some heavy boss fights, don't deviate at all from 60fps. All of this combined, Bluepoint appears to be turning the older Souls game, by name at least, into the most technically cutting edge one. Again, in both visuals and frame rate, the whole package is excelling far past what was possible with Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 on PS4. Comparisons against the original PS3 version are hard to resist. Two generations on, and the upgrade is obviously stark, though Bluepoint is faithful at least to the flow of its cutscenes. Panning shots around the Nexus, for example, follow the same rhythm as the Maiden in Black revives our hero. Shot composition is tweaked, camera angles adjusted, but the timing to each cut is surprisingly close. Material quality plays a bigger part in the upgrade. Bearing in mind PS3 was constrained by its 256MB of GPU RAM, for textures and effects, the jump to 16GB of GDDR6 is writ very large in the results. Texturing for tree bark, dirt, and the quality of chainmail all take advantage with higher resolution assets. We have what looks like parallax occlusion maps on Stone Walls 2, covered in leaves that pass through light. It may be a 1440p native picture, but everything on show is rich in detail and combines together beautifully. That's not to speak on how it actually plays. New motion captures for a post takedown stick out, slamming opponents' bodies into the ground or kicking them away from your impaled sword. It's more stylized, more physical than we're used to seeing in the original, but a nice touch. Enemies drop weapons and shields on impact too, which adds to the visual language of combat. Crucially though, every impact still has that sense of weight we'd expect of a Souls title, backed up by reworked sound design. Short of actually playing it, combat still looks very much physics based. Shields clash and stagger opponents, and there's still a focus on secondary animations. The swaying physics on loincloths or chains on the vanguard, it's all there but taken to a greater extreme than recent Souls games. All round, I get the sense this demo would look incredible in HDR. Effects are overhauled, where the depth of the flame lurkers fire attacks, the sparks on clashing shields, and the new volumetric fog on doorways would excel in that wider colour space. Even the lightning in the Shrine of Storms as it lights up the rain-soaked brickwork already looks incredible in SDR here. The whole demo is packed with highlights honestly, soap signs on the floor are enhanced over the original, giving a kind of spread of embers. I also love the way chunks of stone flake away from the gargoyle with each strike. And then there's more and more fire. Wyverns on bridges, the armor spider spewing lava, and torches lining every dungeon wall. Better still, each light source creates these dynamic shadows as characters pass. Overall, some may miss the more muted tones and the more barren areas of the PS3 original. Still, between the reworked animations, lighting, materials, and effects, it's an amazing way to re-explore Boletaria when it releases. One final point shines in the demo too, loading times. Level streaming is one of the key benefits with having a fast SSD installed as standard on PS5. For Demon's Souls Remake, it appears the upshot is faster travel between archstones. You see it here, a quick flash and we're transported near instantly, whereas the PS3 version takes to my account 11 seconds to achieve the same feat. Given Demon's Souls relies more heavily than most on warping between archstones to and from the Nexus, I think that's a good thing. A bit of a shame we perhaps might not see as many loading screens with weapon or character detail, but for playability it's a step forward. Demon's Souls Remake is said to be one of the most clear-cut must-haves at PlayStation 5's launch. There's still a lot to learn about it though. How closely to the original will online play handle? Will it control exactly the same as the original or will there be quality of life improvements? And what of the mention of the PC version that was briefly shown and then removed from the trailer? We do need to see it played properly rather than in a god mode with one hit kills, but it's not too great a stretch to imagine it being played closely to the original. All this aside, visually speaking, Bluepoint's work is a grade above anything we've seen in the series. Expect more gothic flourishes and a slightly different visual tone, but it'll no doubt be a great early showcase for PS5 when it launches, and I can't wait. But that's all from me today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. 
To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch with me or the team, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. Featuring its new warp wireless technology, Omen's PC peripherals allow for lag-free gaming. From the 360-degree audio of its Omen frequency headphones, the 180-hour battery life of the vector mouse, and the 2.4 GHz connection of its Spacer keyboard, Omen has you covered for the ultimate wireless experience.